Hi people, I'm Dr. Shruti here and it's going to be a quick look at how this beautiful structure zygous vein is traveling inside our body. All right? Not to complicate it, let's keep it simple. Right? So let's start by drawing our famous heart. Yes, you're all champions of drawing the heart, of course. Yeah. So the heart obviously is divided into four chambers. Yeah. So you have four chambers of the heart. That is the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle and the left ventricle, right? So what are the two main veins that opens into the right atrium? That is one from the top, you have one main structure that opens here. This is the SVC, all right? The other one obviously is from here that opens is the IVC, all right? So let's just start the journey of the uh, zygous vein. So what happens or how does this azygous vein form? Now, two of these people meet, two veins are going to meet, okay? Now it's happening in the abdominal wall, okay? In the posterior abdominal wall. One vein is coming straight and from the side another vein comes. They both meet, fall in love and they become the azygous vein. Now who are these two veins that becomes the azygous vein? So this is called as the right ascending lumbar all right this is called the right ascending lumbar and this is called the right subcostal vein so the right subcostal vein and the right ascending lumbar are both going to unite or meet at a point that is the venue where exactly landmark they meet is at the t12 vertebra they meet at the t12 vertebra to form the azygous vein and t12 vertebra so now they lie in the posterior abdominal wall okay so what happens is now they are seen uh, they go uh, ascend upwards okay now they fed up being in the posterior abdominal wall so they decided they have now decided that is azygous vein is now decided to pass through the diaphragm and enter the thoracic cavity so it passes through the diaphragm through the aortic opening, right? It passes through the aortic opening of the diaphragm and it enters where now? It enters the posterior mediastinum. Now it's become the star, one of the star contents of the posterior mediastinum. So what it enters the posterior mediastinum very decently it goes up, ascends upwards. And as ascends upwards, it is directly lying on the thoracic vertebra. Sleeps on the rest, nicely gets a backrest from the thoracic vertebra, goes all the way up, okay. Goes straight till one level where once it touches T4, suddenly a turn takes happens in its life okay there's a turn that takes place in the life of the azygous vein and that turn is now known as the arch of iota okay i mean sorry arch of the azygous vein and once the arch of azygous vein now enters and terminates by draining into the uh, svc at the level of the second costal cartilage second costal cartilage yes I, I think i kept it pretty simple yes the two people the star people who meet to form is one is the right subcostal vein and the right ascending lumbar vein both will unite at the level of t12 vertebra in the posterior abdominal wall to form the azygous vein they ascend upwards passes through the aortic opening in the diaphragm continue to ascend upwards in the posterior mediastinum and when it reaches the level of T4, it decides to take a turning point in life and form the arch of the azygous vein and ends by draining into the SVC at the level of the second costal cartilage. I hope you have all understood this. So, as it goes, it doesn't go alone. It looks very lonely now. So, on the way, picks up a few people. All right, so it picks up who the posterior intercostal veins. Okay, as it goes, it picks up the posterior intercostal veins. And how many posterior intercostal veins does it pick up? Okay, to make it better, this is number 11, 
the 11th posterior right posterior intercostal vein 10 9 8 7 6 5 all right so all of these that is 5 to 11 right posterior intercostal veins open directly into the azygous vein and then suddenly i don't know for some unknown reason the four the three and the second posterior intercostal vein will unite together to form the right superior intercostal vein the right superior intercostal vein and it in turn opens into the azygous veins okay so two three and four posterior intercostal vein unites to form the right superior intercostal vein and opens into the azygous vein. So these are the direct tributaries that is happening for the azygous vein. Now what happens is azygous vein is now draining only. You have seen the entire thing taking place on which side? It is taking care of only the right side. So who takes care of the left side? Right? Right side is taken care by the azygous vein. So co to compensate that on the left side, all right, there are two structures that are going to be formed. So one is called, one starts from here and passes up, okay. And the other starts from here and also passes and meets the azygous vein, all right. So the common landmark where these two go and meet or crosses will be if I want to draw a vertebra here it will be T8 vertebra so around between T7 and T8 one structure passes through and that structure is the accessory hemi azygous vein and another structure that passes from the left side to the right side at the level of T8 over border of the T8 or between T8 and T9 is called as the hemi azygous vein right so there are two more tributaries uh, of the azygous vein that is the accessory hemi azygous vein and the hemi azygous vein so the accessory hemi azygous vein how is it formed it is formed by the union of 5 6 7 8 left posterior inter Costal weights. Yes, I hope I'm clear. The 5, 6, 7, and 8 posterior intercostal weight unite to form the, they're all drained into the accessory hemi azygous vein. Whereas the remaining, the how is the hemi azygous vein formed? Obviously, you have the same two veins in the left side, right? One is the left lumbar ascending lumbar and the left subcostal vein so the left ascending lumbar and the left subcostal vein both unite to form the hemiazygous vein which goes up and receives the 11 10 and 9 posterior intercostal veins on the left side and they both drain into the azygous vein Yes, so this is a very simple schematic picture and explanation of the azygous vein. So if I really want to make a flowchart of the azygous vein as a short answer question for the azygous vein, I can say that azygous vein is seen on which side? It's seen on the right side, right? And where does it start? It starts where? Origin is from the T12 vertebra at the, in the posterior abdominal wall yeah yes so i'll just clear clarify clear this page out and let you know once again so looking at the azygous vein yes so it is a content it is formed where in posterior abdominal wall at the level of T12 vertebra by the union of right costal, right subcostal and right 
SND lumbar veins, right? And it is exclusively seen on the right side. Okay, so after formation, it passes through the aortic opening in the diaphragm, right? And enters the posterior mediastinum. Mm -hmm. And then it ascends upwards at the level of T4. It decides to become the arch of azygous and after it becomes the arch of azygous what happens it drains into the SVC where exactly at the level of the second costal cartilage yeah and one more important thing is, remember the arch of azygous. If you have studied lungs, you would remember that. On the right side of the lung, if I am drawing the right side of the lung, okay, this is the mediastinal surface. Suppose this is the hilum of the lung, okay. Above the hilum of the lung, on the right side, there is a groove for the arch of the azygous. So this is the exact relation to the lung and before it drains into the IVC. Yes, so this is azygous vein in short with its tributaries, origin and termination. I hope you liked my class. If you want, please let me know. I shall make more for you. Thank you.